Yep, you saw me. There you go, guys. That's fish. There you go, guys. That's unreal! Oh, this is such an awesome looking fish. Oh, yeah! Alright, guys, check that out. What's up, everyone? Scott the Trout Hammer here. It's Saturday, and I'm doing something I don't normally do on a Saturday. Lots and lots of this. The reason I haven't done a fit vlog in a while is because I had to change things up, what I was doing. Mostly my schedule wasn't working around it with work, with the hours I work, and trying to get time to go into the gym, and the nutrition plan I set up for myself, and the overall plan I set up for myself. The pre-workout protocols were pretty hard to follow, which is why I wasn't getting a lot of time to go to the gym. So I switched back over to the keto diet on Monday, hence the reason we've got chicken thighs and not chicken breasts and some ground chuck burgers, which also means we're going to do a lot of this. And I want to wait to do another fit vlog until I figure out exactly what I want to say, what content I want in the video, but I can tell you it's working. I mean, my shirts are already looser, my pants are already looser, and I've only been doing this for a week. Now, the great thing is the grocery cost is actually smaller on keto, because on my previous nutrition plan, I was spending a lot of money on meat, and you actually don't want a lot of protein on keto. But another fit vlog should be down the pipe here pretty soon. It's gonna be busy day. Oh, tummy time. Yeah. She's getting good at this. Oh, honey, look at how cute you are. You gonna knock it over again? Yeah, she likes knocking it over. It's good for her to show the oh. toys. Look at you. Look at you all strong and tummy timing it up. Shh, <laughs> up <in the> <laughs> By the way, guys, look at how huge she is. She's three months. Oh, okay. She's three months. She's a three-month-old. That's as big as most one-year-olds. She's 15 pounds, two ounces. So what's funny is my parents showed me my uh, baby book from when I was a kid, and she's caught up with where I am when I was her age, and she was like... So when I was born, I was a 10-pound baby, and I was almost 23 inches. She was 19 and a half inches and seven and a half pounds. She's already caught up with how big I was at three months, so she's gonna be a linebacker. Well, that didn't turn up as well as I hoped. A little bit bigger of a flare up. <laughs> Trying to get those about medium. Yes, you can't actually have ground beef medium. So now they're probably gonna be medium well, because I'm taking those off in just a second. In case you guys didn't know, and this is from years of being a cook, there are two ways to cook meat. Rare and medium rare, but past that, it's varying degrees of disappointment. And another sort of cooking tip for you guys, you know, something also kind of fitness related. It would be a fit vlog, but this isn't going to end up being a fit vlog. Is when you're cooking or grilling with meat that has a lot of fat, i.e. a lot of skin, flame does not, or heat does not cook. Heat produces flame, flame produces carbon. I don't want to eat carbon, I want to eat delicious meat. So keep your meat higher up off the flame. That's pretty much it for the fit vlog type stuff, but it is Saturday, which means we got lots of shout outs to give. So you guys know I'm trying to get this channel to grow to a thousand subscribers, and I need your help to do that, so if you could please hit that subscribe button down there, and notify bell up there, so you're going to be the first to see all the great content that's going to come from this channel. And like I just talked about, I've been giving shout outs to new subscribers now, we just hit 500 subscribers last Friday, and we're already over 530, so... <laughs> I, I, biggest growth I've ever seen. I really don't know what to say other than thank you guys so much. Which means we've got a lot of shout outs to give today. So first off, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing this name correctly. Derek Steckhuizen, Eric Cruz, Rocco Manginelli, Andrew Hammond, G Money Strong Outdoors, Fishing Every Day, something I wish I could do, James Barron, Who's Your Back OD, Alec J, Rob A, and real fatties, thank you guys so much for subscribing to the channel. There's a lot of people that subscribed and sent through comments, and I was searching for them. If you guys, uh, if you guys did subscribe to the channel, I didn't read out your name there. Please let me know in the comments below on this video. But I want to give you guys a shout out. But again, thank you guys so much for subscribing. And like I said, there were 30 people who subscribed the the channel since the last video. So there's a lot of people that had their subscription setting on private. Thank you guys all the same. You guys know who you are. You guys are rock stars. But also, like I said, we hit 500 subscribers, which means giveaways are coming. The giveaway round is going to start next week once I decide what the giveaway is going to be. Want it to be something good, want it to be something seasonal, but if you guys want to get in on that, and if you guys want to have your name shouted out on the channel, all you gotta do for all of those is subscribe today. Do I hear a big pile of cuteness in here? Yeah. It's walking and talking. Yeah. 
Sophia, you're talking to me. She is. Yeah. I was asking her. <laughs> yeah. Hi, honey. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. What you doing? What you talking about? <laughs> oh, you the big smile. I love you. Oh, hello. Sweet honey. Sweet Sophia. Oh, sweet Sophia. Alright, so it is Saturday, and I want to do some fishing that I haven't done in a while. It is definitely the time of year to do your bass fishing here in Oregon because we're, in, we're pretty much right in the fall feed. And I've got some bass stuff that I want to throw around that I actually wanted to throw around specifically for this time of year. So, going to do some bass fishing tonight, but in the afternoon, going to do some other fishing that involves this stuff here. Some of these. It's the type of fishing I've been trying to get on this channel for, honestly, since the beginning. Because they're such an amazing fish to fish for. They fight so hard. And, you know, even the small ones weigh a lot and have a lot of strength. Yeah, we're going carp fishing. To get us all set up here, some things you need when you're carp fishing. You need a good net that has a real long extension handle. I've got a pad here that I'm going to use to uh, hold the carp on use that to weigh it also. And the thing weighs three pounds, so I know when I weigh the carp how much it weighs, but not a lot of not a lot of place to use the pod where you know the pod the pod is this like standing thing that you like you make and you put the rods in it can hold three rods it has bite alarms on it not a lot of places i could use that today plus i'm gonna be moving around a lot so we're just using the good old-fashioned rod stands all right we're working with bait today so first thing we need to do is hide that human scent ah smells like grass i'm gonna sort of take a two-pronged approach i'm gonna use a one boilie and one ball of pack bait. First, need a piece of corn on the hair rig. Thread it on. Get a bait stopper on there. This is the same pack bait I used at uh, St. Louis Pond, so same tactic applies. Just take a wad of it, mash it real good into that method lead. Try to pack it in as tight as you can. And stick the hook in that pack bait. Mash it back in with that fake corn on top. And for grins, I'm going to put some Procure Carp Spit on the piece of corn. I'm using this stuff for a while. I know it works. And not going to cast it out very far. Get the line tight. Turn on the rear drag. So when I hear that rear drag go, I'm going to know I got a fish on. And this rod, we're going to use a boilie. Boilies are these little balls of dough that you make and we'll do a video someday showing the recipe but it's basically shredded wheat uh all-purpose flour sweet corn strawberry jello and a couple eggs and you boil it and that's where they get the name boily boiling it turns into this little packed in little dough ball now this thing lasts a lot longer than that pack bait will because this thing doesn't break up but still puts off a lot of scent in the water you rig it up pretty much the exact same way you do that piece of fake corn on the hair rig get a threading needle on there thread it onto the hair rig itself put a bait stopper in the loop tighten it up and pretty much you just Carolina rig this so this isn't a very long leader this is only like uh, eight or so inches and this is a half ounce tungsten weight but the whole point with the boilie is this thing moves independently from the hook carp has a the, Carp have a real soft mouth and they have a real sensitive mouth. If they feel weight, if they feel the hook, they'll just spit everything out and run. What the boily does, it allows them to pick it up, put it in its mouth, see that it's food, they don't find anything else. They suck it up and that's when they get the hook inside their mouth. That doesn't hook them. What hooks them is when they blow all the debris out, then the hook gets them in the side of the mouth. Real specific carp catching method. And I'm going to put some carp spit on the boily as well. Now this one... I want to get a little further out. So I'm going to cast this thing. Yep, right over there. Perfect. Now, I couldn't get my rod stake in the ground over here. Hey there, Mr. Plant. Can I trust you to hold my rod? Yep, that'll work. Get a bite alarm on this rod. Now we just wait. If you guys couldn't tell, I'm here at Waverly Lake, and this lake actually surprisingly is famous for carp. There are trophy carp in here, and I know a couple of professional carp anglers. One from either i think he's from either finland or sweden i can't remember one of the northern european countries and they come here to fish for carp because there are 40 pound plus carp in here i'm not kidding i mean it's definitely gotta say something to people who are willing to come from out of the country to fish this lake for carp you know those europeans they know their carp 
practically their only game fish. So normally something I would do with carp fishing is I would use my pod and the pod would have the rods pretty low to the ground, pretty parallel to the ground. And I'd put a, uh, I put a sinker that I attached to the end of a snap swivel. And I'd put that on the end of the line to keep the line flat on the ground because carp spook real easily. If they feel line, if they feel weight, they'll run and they won't bite for the rest of the day. And that weight keeping the line on the bottom makes it so you don't run into them also makes it to where like say if i catch a fish on this rod i'm not going to be fighting the line in that rod but like i said i'm going to be moving around a lot another thing about carp fishing is if you don't get a bite in 15 minutes move down the bank see a ton of bait fish though might come back here for uh might come back here for bass tonight okay yeah so it is 4 30 right now i'm probably only going to fish for carp for maybe maybe an hour if i don't get a bite in an hour i'm gonna not bother with carp. I haven't fished this lake for carp when the water is this dirty and this bad, but definitely gonna come back with bass tonight because if you guys can't tell, we got a cloudy day. UV index is real low, that's why I'm not wearing the sunproof shirt, but it's also a prefrontal day. So we were supposed to have a storm come through today and give us a pretty good downpour, but that storm last minute moved to the north. So now we've got a couple more days of weather just like this. UV index is low, barometric pressure is lower, temperature is lower, bass are gonna be on the bite. But we have a good big rainstorm coming in for the next couple of days next week, so this weekend is the prefrontal conditions. I'll fish here for about an hour for carp, go home, kiss the baby, and then come back and fish for bass. All right, about time to pack up and move down the bank. Here we go with spot number two. And again we wait. Enjoy a nice bottle of Troll Tears. Yeah, pretty much just gonna be doing the same thing down the bank, just about 15 minutes per spot, no bites, move on. Yeah, actually the reason why I'm sticking close to the shorelines is because here in the uh, late summer, early fall, and same thing in the late spring, early summer, uh, carp are gonna be as shallow as possible. They are a warm water species. They like the warmest water, so of course in the winter you're gonna find them in the deepest water. In the summer, you're gonna find them super shallow. I mean, even in this water here, this water's like maybe three, five inches deep. You'll find big carp in this shallow water because they like the warmth. I've seen carp, you know, pretty much on the bank. They get themselves, they warm themselves on the bank in the sun to heat themselves up. They love to sun themselves like that. But also I know it's like, I know the vegetation sort of grows along this bank line. You can tell because the water's clearer over here and there's fish. Yeah, that's pretty much how you locate carp and you know, it's early fall here in Oregon. I mean, people think we're still in summer. Leaves on the ground. As far as I'm concerned, as soon as the leaves start falling, we're in fall. Then it definitely cooled down a lot. This week it got up to, I think, tops like high 70s. And I think next week the high is supposed to be in the high 60s, so it's, it's cooling down fast just sucks because almost all the carp I've caught out of this lake have real milky eyes which tells me they're nocturnal feeders. I'm fishing early evening. I am. Might catch a wandering catfish. Catfish will eat the same type of bait I'm using. We shall see. Yep, and we are heading back to the truck. No reason to show the other spots I stopped at because nothing happened but seeing a ton of bass and panfish activity so that's where I'm going. Going to get my bass stuff and I'm coming back. Not too broken up about not catching carp. Carp put up a good fight. That's the reason why I want to fish for carp. I haven't had a good fight from a fish in a while. But it's just, I don't fish for them very often. I know I talked up this lake and hyped it up real nice and big right before I leave with my tail between my legs. But, eh, not much of a carp fisherman. Still getting into it. So let's adjust to something I'm better at. And just like that, we are back and we are ready to kick some bass. There we go. <laughs> right as that hog hit the water. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is a decent bass. Yeah, probably a two. Yeah, maybe just under two. Right. Yeah. Had the feeling on the brush hog pretty much as soon as it hit the water. Yeah. Didn't even set the hook on that guy. Well, yeah. Brush hog. Uh, oh. VMC brush hog. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably a yeah, one and a half, two pounder, which means. Good deep sniff. All right, dude, I'm gonna kinda torpedo you that way because I don't wanna fling you end over end. Perfect. Just bought this VMC brush hog and that was the first cast with it. I think I'm satisfied. <laughs> you little turd. There we go. Right back in the same area. Not gonna fool me again. Yeah, a little smaller than the last one. This one's about a pound. I'll tell you what guys, the fishy senses are tingling today. Here I switched that little swim bait on a little jig. That's what we got. All right, here we go. Same dive as your buddy, or not. Okay, out of the mud. Do it my way this time. <laughs> All right, guys, I think we are on a pattern. <laughs> There's another one down there. Oh, man. The senses, they are a tingling. They's telling me things. They say, use the shaky head, Luke. That was, that was a bite. First cast with a shaky head. Man, I'm getting hit every cast, I just can't hook them. I don't know what's going on. Hmm, I think I know what to do. Let's change the hook. Hmm, no dice on the shaky head. The big girl's out. The big girl's out. All right, I think it's about time to break out the frog. I don't know. What do you guys think? You guys think I like my rage tails? <laughs> this entire box is Rage Tales. That's definitely my favorite thing that came about from the Lucky Tackle Box subscription is I is it introduced me to the Rage Tail line of plastics, which is my favorite line of plastics now. Oh yes, as you guys can clearly see from the outside, it's dark. I once again fished into sunset, which I love doing in the summer, just this time of year. Sunset keeps coming earlier and earlier. But definitely was a better trip than the last couple of times I went out bass fishing. Got two bass, one pretty good one. Of course, now that I no longer subscribe to Lucky Tackle Box, I start catching bass to get in on those bass tournaments. Oh yeah, if you guys are new to the channel, for the last year and a half, well, no, year and two months, I had Lucky Tackle Box subscriptions for the bass and the panfish box. And we're going into the first month in over a year where I'm not going to get a single Lucky Tackle box in the mail. I've actually got a video I'm planning on trying to explain why I stopped my subscription to Lucky Tackle Box. But this video is coming to an end, so time to go through the usual outro. Which is where I of course want to know what you guys thought down in the comments below. And again, I'm trying to get this channel to grow to a thousand subscribers and I need your help to do that. So if you could please hit the subscribe button down there, that notify bell up there so you're going to be the first to see all the great content that's going to come from this channel. You know, stuff like you saw today, the bass fishing, going to be more carp fishing once, you know, I figure it out a little more. <laughs> but if you want a shout out on the channel, all you got to do is subscribe. And of course, we hit 500 subscribers, so giveaways are coming to get in on that. You also got to subscribe. 
The giveaways are going to start with the video that I'm going to upload early in the week. It's going to pretty much start on Monday. And I already have the video out listing out the parameters of how these giveaways are going to work. It's the video I uploaded two, two videos ago. Yeah, and I thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, tips up, tight lines, and have fun fishing. I'm hungry.